Hi, my name is Londa Rolfing. I am a pattern designer, but I also love to travel all around the country teaching creative sewing when I'm invited to sewing guilds, quilt guilds, machine dealerships. Today I'm here to teach you about circular ruffles, also known as flounces. So let's learn how we do that. A flounce, as I said before, is really just a circle. You can think of this as a donut or a tire. Today we're going to refer to it as a donut. Given that you know where you want to put a flounce, you'll measure that distance. That becomes a circumference to the inner part of the donut. So how do you make a circle knowing how big that is? Well, you could go back to high school geometry and use Mr. Pi, but most of us don't want to do that. I have a much easier way, which is simply subtracting an inch and dividing by six. So if we were going to do that for my garment, it would have been 16 inches, less one is 15, get out your cell phone, divide by six, that's close to two and a half. And don't get worried about eighths of an inch, two and a half is fine. The garments that I have here on display can show you how flounces really manifest themselves. You probably never realized, but do you see how this beautiful softness comes around? Well, that's simply this great big circular ruffle or flounce put on like this, and then it flips and comes around in this manner. You have to understand that on a flounce, especially done like that, you're going to see both sides of the fabric. On this garment, you can see that it has lots of flounces. In fact, I just counted them. There's 14, and it used much smaller widths of flounces. All of these garments are knit. When it's a knit, since knits don't ravel, you don't have to finish off the edges of the circle, which is really a great thing. You can just cut them, and it makes a very contemporary look. On the other hand, if you're using a woven, look what happens to the edges where it's straight grain. It's going to ravel. If it doesn't start out raveling, believe me, it's going to ravel. Ask me how I know. So that being said, let's make a flounce, just like I would have done for my garment. You take a big square of fabric, of tissue, and accurately fold it into quarters. And then, with that measurement that you know in mind, it came out to two and a half, right? I'm from that fold going to mark out two and a half inches. Do you see? And then you'll want to decide the width of your ruffle. I say you always want to make it wider than you think you want it because you can always make it narrower, but let's say three inches. So do you see I'm going to come out from where I just marked and make three. So I have done all of that, have it all ready for you here in this next sample. So here I am, here's the inner arc and here's the outer arc. Then take your rotary cutter and cut. Now stop and think, if I cut on this inner arc, would I have any seam allowance with which to get, um, attach it to my garment? No. Nope. So I better come back a seam allowance worth, right? That's probably the hardest thing there is to remember. You'll do it wrong once and then you'll never do it again. So now I have a seam allowance to attach it with and now I'm going to cut the outer arc. And guess what? Voila you have the donut whose circumference is exactly the right length to attach it to your garment. It's really simple. So what did we do again for the math? We subtracted an inch and we divided by six. Now there's one fine point to when you're cutting and that is when you come into the folds you have to come in at a right angle. So let me do it wrong. If I come in not at a right angle, if I didn't know that fine point, you will end up with points, and that's not good. So just remember, when you're intersecting the folds, to come in at a right angle. Given that you have your flounce pattern, the next step would simply be to stay stitch around the inner seam line. Do that just to give it some stability. Now, I always used to think that then I needed to clip into this in order to get it to go straight, but sewing on knits, it just does it. You might find in some cases on a woven that you would need to clip into that stay stitching to get it to go straight, but if you don't have to, don't. So here we are. 
Here's another little top. I can then just take that piece, lay it down as I have here, right side down. I have matched, I have marked the center front of my garment and now I'm just going to stitch it on. The next step is simply to cut it very, very close, very, very carefully, and then simply fold your flounce over in top stitch, simply encasing that seam allowance. It's that easy. Now there's another fine point. Do you see how on my top this edge is rounded? That's because when I had my, you have your circle and then obviously at some point you have to cut into it so you have square edges. All I did on my top was that I simply rounded that off. So it just depends what look you want Then you can take what you cut off one side, put it on the other and cut it off the same. On this garment over here, there's a couple of things to show you. Do you see that I left that edge straight? When you have a large expanse over which you want to put a flounce, you'll need to divide it into several different sections. I remember when I did this one first, I measured from the center back all the way around, and when I got my flounce made, which was a very large inner circle, I didn't have much flouncy to it. So I realized then that I needed to do one flounce for the back and one flounce for each front. They're so easy, so simple. The math again is subtract an inch, divide by six. If you're using a woven and you need to finish off the edges, you can simply make it two layers and seam the edge. You can also make garments with flounces. Just take your child's um, or anyone's <laughs> Hip measurement, subtract an inch, divide by six, do the same thing, decide how big, how long you want the skirt, and you would have a poodle skirt. If it's too full, all you need to do is slash into your circle from the outer edge and overlap the edges a little bit. So do you see if I cut out this skirt from this half, it would be 68 inches in circumference versus this 84. So you can decrease the amount of fullness in your flounce simply by slashing in and overlapping. That's how this skirt was made with less flouncy of a flounce. So again, if I were going to make this bottom flounce on this skirt, I would do one circle for the front and another circle for the back. Having done that, I decided I had too much ripple. I didn't want that much, so I did what I showed you over here. I simply slashed in and overlapped to decrease that outer circumference. If you decrease the outer circumference, you will have less fullness.